everybody. This is Bo back in the Sports Lounge. We're going to go do a recap with the main man, Sparky Woods, over at VMI. Coach, how you doing? I'm doing great, Bo. Hope you are this morning. Absolutely. A little rain, a little drizzle, some thunder last night. But, you know, um, I always like coming in when it's a little groggy out. It makes me feel good. Well, I don't want to make you feel worse, but it's beautiful in the Shenandoah Valley this morning. <laughs> <laughs> You know, the Shenandoah Valley, we've had an opportunity to cruise through. We head down to North Carolina at different times, and it's a beautiful countryside, beautiful area, and such a rich history in this country. It really does. You know, the, the fact of being at VMI, if you enjoy history, you know, we're we're right in the middle of it. In fact, I, I, I live about 300 yards from where Robert E. Lee is buried, so it's all about history right here, especially within the United States, within the Civil War history and all, so... It's a beautiful place to live, a lot of wonderful people to live here. Absolutely, Coach. The other thing we wanted to mention out is that we want to say thanks to the military bases and the folks across this country that sent us emails about your program and the support that you have. I think one of the big glaring items here is that, you know, you you take on a schedule. You've got recruits that have to come in at a certain height, certain age, certain level, and you have to compete on a national circuit that has a little different, um, I guess, attendance or, or student body. The commitment to your program is just so impressive from the alumni, the military folks. Um, you know, it's got to feel pretty good to be part of that. Um, you had a good game against Robert Morris. You went into James Madison, which obviously is a juggernaut. Um, you know, talk a little bit about that. Well, I, you know, it, it, um, it is a special place, and it's made up of young men who have full days, that's for sure. And and all. when I came here as a the interview for this job, I, I remember the – uh, wasn't sure if this is something I wanted to do or not, and then they introduced me to uh, several of the players, and then boy, I, my passion, you know, I looked at them and I'd been used to coaching a lot of guys who, you know, the future to them was Friday night, and uh, with this guys here, they certainly are serious about the rest of their life, and, and they're investing in the next 40 years of their life, and in that, investing in the children they don't even have yet, you know, so I was so impressed with that, I can remember telling the players, I said, you know, I was certainly looking at a bunch of winners right now. I said, looks like our job is to try to help you win some games on Saturday. So that's what we're working at, and they're trying to improve on. And we do have a big challenge. James Madison is an outstanding football team. Uh, Coach Matthews has really done a wonderful job there of putting together some, uh, a really well-coached team, obviously, but at the same time, a very talented team, very fast. They were at more speed than we did. And it was hard to keep up with them. That speed really shows up in areas like the uh, special teams. They did a wonderful job of executing their passing game. And, uh, you know, we went in there concerned if we could stop the run. They, they ran the ball very effectively against the University of Maryland the week before when they ran the ball 42 times and only threw it about 19. So we said, man, we've got to somehow not just let them run up down the field on us. Turns out they're – uh, total yardage was about the same as it was against the University of Maryland. The problem was theirs came in the passing game. We were able to, to uh, minimize their running game a lot and maybe too good because it let them go quickly to the passing game and then they were they would get their uh, really outstanding athletes, maybe against some of our younger, not, not as fast guys, and they were able to make some huge plays. Credit them for having a, a really good, so great environment. It was a great uh, place to be. The facilities were awesome and the crowd was right into it. So it was a great environment for us to get a chance to play in. And we learned some lessons. We're going to come away from that a better football team. We knew that uh, uh, they had a great team going in, ranked number seven in the nation. And and uh, we just thought, boy, if we can build from this build from this game, get ready to go into our conference. And we had another great challenge this week in going against the defending national champions, and that's the Richmond Spiders. You know, what's interesting is that if you, leave, if you read the, the mainstream media, they sort of leave off several aspects of the fact of um, how quickly James Madison was moving up and down the field, how quick their team is, and how quickly they, they can, um, you know, uh, mitigate what the other team does. Uh, you know, when you, look at this, when you look at this game for yourself, there's got to be some bright spots on there for guys that stood up that you had to make quick substitutions. Um, you know, what were those changes that you made at halftime that, you know, really helped out in identifying students that you saw a future in in the football program? Well, we had to make some adjustments in the special teams because the speed showed up. They have an excellent return guy, and, and we, would, uh, we would get the ball down there and, and score, and then we would kick the ball to them, and they would be right back on our end of the field real fast. So uh, 
uh, it almost uh, took away from the momentum that we would build by gaining a uh, gaining a score or something, and then they would come right back and, as good teams do, and hurt us on long kickoff returns. And boy, I tell you, when I go back and look at it, I just beat myself thinking that <laughs> uh, you know we kicked this ball to this really outstanding guy, and we could have we could have done a better job of how we lined up to cover and all. So we're going to correct those things and be better at it this week. But you, um, I think that was a big thing that stuck out. But some things that I was impressed with uh, with our football team is we're able to stop or at least minimize the run against a team who likes to run the football with skilled athletes. So uh, one thing that's happening nowadays is that our, everybody is trying to make offenses one-dimensional, not uh, you know to stop the run, and, and uh, we're no different than anybody else. But we were able to do that, and but maybe too well. Therefore, they went to the pass where they would take advantage at times in one-on-one situations with us against the pass. And you can't you can't break down. You miss one tackle against a team that challenges them, and they can go score. But we did that. We were able to run the ball some. We were able to knock them off the ball a little bit, and that's encouraging because we haven't been able to do that in the past. And the fact that we saw a lot of really outstanding play in some areas of skill uh, in the special teams, we were able to get the ball back up the field ourselves pretty well. And we were able at times to uh, to uh, move that ball in terms of the punting game. We, we moved the ball down the other end of the field. We were able to circle them up, cover them pretty well there. We played pretty mistake-free. The crowd noise did have a factor on us. We had five pre-stamp penalties, but we did not have any selfish penalties. We did not have any, uh, you know, uh, pushing the back or clips or anything like that. So we played pretty disciplined there. And I was really proud with how our guys played throughout the entire game. They were fighting just as hard in the last uh, quarter as they were in the first quarter. So that's something we can certainly build on. There's no question in my mind that this team is better. I think that you just got to make sure you find that in the film. And we have the advantage that a lot of people don't have to read the paper or just come to the game because we can run that projector back, (laughs) see it over and over again, and we can find the good that's coming out of this progress of this football team. You know, Coach, we hear a lot about speed, and here in the Big Ten country, in the GLIAC country, um, the GLIAC looks like they're built for speed. If you watch how the D2 does, we don't have any one double A's here. We've got the MAC and obviously the Big Ten. And we hear about all the time as far as the speed of the South. Uh, you know, uh, a lot of fans here get upset because they think it's overrated that you got a fast kid, fast here. And what I see across the nation outside of the Big Ten in, in the state of Michigan is that the whole team is fast. And there's a big there's a big reality check when teams from up north go down south where they've got a six foot five guy weighing 350, and then they're going against a guy that might be a little lighter but can run a 40 almost as fast as a running back. You know, the speed is is I think a lot of people misread it. It's a team speed that when they snap that ball and they're pulling and they're blocking, they can run down the field and make a hit. Where if you're not structured right, it it, pay, it hurts because you know having a six foot five guy running you know about three thirty can run as fast as a running back <laughs> and hits one of your uh, one of your linebackers. Um, it springs a big hole. Uh, you know, speak a little about the speed exactly as far as the team for the audience who may not quite understand what it means. They typically hear about the receivers and running backs and quarterbacks, but the linemen are pretty darn quick. No, no question about it. There's uh, there's a saying that speed kills, and and that's true in football. They, uh, you know, one of the big factors for us was that we were actually we were concerned that we could get movement with our offensive line and knock them off the ball. At times we were we were able to knock their defensive line back a little bit, but the biggest problem we had was cutting off the backside. So we couldn't. They were so quick that their defensive linemen. And they were big and, and fast. We're, we couldn't get them cut off, so the pursuit would get to us and minimize our gains from what we would hope to be a six, eight, ten yard gain to a four or five yard gain throughout the game. And then uh, speed always shows up in like special teams. But you know, the guy who probably exposed the style of football that's being played right now was a Big Ten guy. Right now is Rich, Rich Rodriguez. <laughs> that's what right. He did at West Virginia, he spread the entire field where he created make you cover every blade of grass on the field and then you take a guy like Pat White or somebody that has excellent speed and quickness and you put guys out into space where you have to tackle him where it's out into space so the, the spread offense that he uh, cultivated while he was at West Virginia now is carried to Michigan and it's kind of caught fire and gone throughout the, the countryside is a great example of how speed gets uh, people in, in one-on-one situations and forces you to make that play where 
whereas a more conventional eye formation or something was power, which is probably something that historically was in the Big Ten. It's fun football to watch. I enjoy it very much. But what's happened uh, that is people has used this spread where you have to cover.